I've been playing Arcadian Atlas because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll Reviews, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled, so you could have some faith that I may know what I'm actually talking about, sort of. So first up, the basic details about Arcadian Atlas. It was released in the 27th of July, 2023, and was developed by Twin Otter Studios and published by Serenity Forge for PC currently. And it took me roughly 13 hours to finish. A tale of nobles and a war of succession set the stage for a tragic play. The king is dying and, and the queen rejects the two daughters from the previous marriage. It's right to succeed. And thus, rebellion between queen and former crown princess begins. To this backdrop, the younger princess experiences something even stranger and potentially darker. As her young love blooms, ancient powers will rise. In among all this sees our erstwhile heroes, a young couple that will test the boundaries of their love in the face of opposing sides and ideas. But between them, they may just be able to save something of the world. The plot of this game is for the braver of heart, shall we say. It's a darker tale than most and doesn't shy away from the grim realities of war. And this darkness extends to many of the characters. They're not the most likable crew, but not in a bad way. You will love and hate parts of each one of them. It makes for quite a gripping tale. The gameplay, as usual, we start outside the battle and we have quite a bit going on. You get a traditional match screen with a bunch of nodes. Red being for the new mission points, yellow being for points of interest, mostly for contracts, and blue being towns. Blue nodes have an item shop, which lets you give your units various pieces of class specific equipment and has useful options such as the outfitter, which allows you to buy bulk items for each character and equip them all at once. The recruiter is the next item on the menu and it allows you to hire dudes and dudettes. It provides one option at a time and you kind of skip through them until you find the one you like the look of. You can rename them and such. And finally, you can spend command points. Like the command point shop is kind of interesting. It's things like respecting your main characters, scout reports, which give you ex extra details about enemies and contract missions, contract missions, item discounts in, in the shop and such. It's quite an interesting little shop, but there's not that much going on once you've bought what you want. I find myself actually using the recruiter a couple of times um, due to the way the characters level up. It means some characters will fall behind in, during the game, so you want to hire new ones to replace your random mooks. Because um, when you hire them, they come in at the same level as the main characters. So it's a handy way of keeping your team leveled up to the right level. And, you know, because you, you're getting a new dude, you can completely respect them to a more favoured build as you find more skills that you like. Um, after this, we have the tavern where you can listen to chatter, which basically is like a history background stuff and general extra lord, um, extra lore bits and pieces. And you can also take on contracts, which are basically side mission battles, which give you extra loot and levels for being completed. They also have some funny little stories attached to them sometimes. The other menu is the main menu troop management kind of screen where it's got all the usual options, like your settings and stuff like that, and where you save, but obviously the troop management's the main bit. In this menu, you select which little bugger you want, and you can change their equipment um, outside of the outfitters. But I didn't really mess around with that much. The main thing you're in here for is the skills menu attached to each of your characters. So each character has a class, which is Ranger, Warmancer, or Cavalier, and apo Apothecary. Each one has their own skill trees and specializations to go down. Um, so it's a good point to talk about leveling in the game as before we talk about the rest of the skills and how they work. So basically every character who takes part in a battle gets a level. There's no XP or anything like that. You take part in a battle and you gain a level. Um, apart from main characters, uh, always gain a level even if they weren't in the battle. So it's a, just a way of the game of keeps keeping your main dudes leveled yeah when i'm speaking about the main characters these are the story specific characters as opposed to the ones you hire so 
as you gain a level, you also gain a class point. Uh, and this leads us to the skill system. So we have to spend these class points to buy skills. So a class will have general skills at the top and then a couple of different skill trees that you can use. And each skill costs one, two or three class skill points. And some of them have multiple levels, making them more effective. Um, and as you go down a skill tree, you unlock more bits and pieces for it based on what you previously purchased. But it's not strict. It's not a once you start going down one specialization in your class, you're stuck to it. You can mix and match between the two and get all the skills you want. So all my apothecaries had healing and also had the like attack skill side of a bit as well. Um, to go along with this, some of these skills you get are permanent passives. But there's three different types of other skills which are which you buy and then have to equip in the skill system and you can only have one of that type equipped at once these are things like um, there's various different movements so you could maybe have one of the movement skills that makes your move go further or jump higher and you'd have to select between the two uh, it's just it's just a choice um not all my characters by the end i had one of each of these skills um but it's just how it works out depending on the skills you want and then after a certain number of levels you get to promote your characters as well and they get to choose between two new classes but it does lock you out of buying skills for your base class so make sure you've got all the skills you want from your base class before promoting but then you get to promote and you get some shiny new skills to unlock and and then you can also buy one of the main things by promoting is being able to add an extra accessory by unlocking that skill so yeah in battle it's pretty much what you'd expect from a game heavily inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics which is something I should review one day the turn order is speed based with the order shown at the top of the screen so you can plan your moves um, and when it's your character's turn they get to make a move and some form of action during their turn. Those actions can be a basic attack, using one of their skills, or defending, etc. The normal stuff. It's, it's very simple. Um, some of the skills have areas of effect, so they hit multiple squares. But be aware, these do hit friend or foe alike. There's even a simple elemental system with um, ice, fire, and lightning magic. And some of the various status effects is can various status effects can affect these skills. So my personal favourite was applying the wet status effect onto an enemy, and then blasting them with lightning magic for massive damage. Quite often, one hitting an, an opponent. Uh, facing in these games is usually quite important. While it isn't the most important in this game, it still does have an effect, as in being hit from the side or back increases your chance to hit by lowering the enemy's evasion, basically. So hitting them from the back, they basically have no evasion. Overall, it's a pretty simple battle system. It does actually have an okay variety of enemy types that keeps like the game feeling a bit different as you go through. Now, what did I think was good about the game? Well, in Arcadian Atlas's case, I thought the pixel art was really well done. It's a visual treat in motion, especially during cutscenes where you get to see quite a bit of expression from the characters. And this actually complements the story very well. As this tale ain't your typical happy-go-lucky RPG. It's surprisingly dark and mature, which is definitely a highlight. And it kept me playing until the end because I had to know how it finished because of what everything that was going on. It made for a more compelling tale than the power of friendship type stuff that we do see quite often. But no game is perfect. And this title suffers mostly around its control system, strangely enough. The mouse and keyboard controls were very clunky, to the point I pulled my control right. And I will admit, at first, even that felt bad as well. Um, but a patch since has made the controller feel better. I think they're still doing work on the keyboard and mouse. But this control goes from just operating through the menus on the map screen and such, and in battle with the biggest flaw in battle being you can't rotate the camera 
and with maps having quite a bit of elevation and like ups and downs, buildings and such, it can make positioning a little bit frustrating as you're wondering why you can't reach the enemy because you can't spin the camera around to see where you are properly. And if I'm honest as well, I personally didn't find the promoted classes all that enjoyable. I tended to stick to using skills from the base classes um, as I found they were more useful. Maybe that's just me and maybe I didn't use them right, I don't know. It might just be a personal nitpick, but the class system felt a little bit lacking. I felt no encouragement to really push the new classes. But anyway, for my final opinions, we should have a quick look at what the critics think. And while it's currently sitting at a 64 on Metacritic, with no user score because it hasn't had the required four user scores to hit one. And if I'm honest, the 64 is pretty on the mark score-wise. I did have a look to see if there were any user scores, and it has one review of a four, which is a little brutal. <laughs> to conclude, Arcadian Atlas is a love letter to the 32-bit era of strategy RPGs, leaning heavily on them for inspiration. And while the gameplay is a bit lackluster, it does provide a fantastic, albeit a little bit short, story to get lost in. And if I'm being honest, it's a game to pick up on a sale, as it's a little bit pricey at its base price. So because of that, my final rating is for niche fans only. <laughs>